What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I want to talk about the top five things that you will never see good poker players doing. Only fish do these, let's talk about it. All right guys, so if you see anybody doing these five things at the poker table, it's likely you're in a good poker game full of recreational players, aka our fishy friends. These are the people you make the money against in poker. So let's jump into it. Counting down from five to one. Number five is bluffing the fish. So guys, you're never going to see good poker players trying to bluff these players. I'm going to give you examples, by the way, for every single thing on this list so you get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So why is bluffing the fish a bad idea? The reason why, guys, is because they're just going to call you down. Your 10th level thinking that you saw Daniel DeGrano do in a million dollar high stakes cash game is just going to go completely over their head in your $1, $2 cash game and they're going to call you down. Let me give you an example. You've got Ace King of Hearts and by the river the board reads 8 of Diamonds, 9 of Spades, 10 of Diamonds, 3 of Clubs, and Jack of Hearts. So guys, if you try to make a bluff here, the recreational player is just going to snap call you literally right away with their King 7. That's a straight on this board. Their 10-4 which is second pair. Their Jack 6 which is top pair queen eight is a straight guys fish recreational players they love to play all sorts of trashy hands like this you already know this i don't need to make a video about it they're gonna call you with all these hands guys there's no point in bluffing in a situation like this i know it sucks we all want to try to win every single pop you need to understand in poker you can't win them all sometimes you just need to check wave the white flag and give up in a situation like this there's no point in digging your grave even deeper in a spot like this just check it back and pick a better player to bluff don't bluff the fish moving on to point number four is we're going to talk about another player type now is the nits the exact opposite and what you don't want to be doing is paying off the nits so to start with what is a nit in poker well nits or rocks as they're often called are the people basically that sit around waiting for the nuts and the nuts basically means in poker it's a slang term for essentially the best hand possible for example pocket aces pocket kings ace king and they're looking to hit a flush they're looking to hit a straight they're looking to hit top pair two pair something like that guys these players are really easy easy also to identify at your poker table because they're sitting around waiting for the nuts all the time they're never involved in the action unless they have a really big hand so it makes it really easy because every half an hour or hour when they start finally making big bets or raises they're literally screaming from the mountaintops hey guys I've finally got top pair I finally got pocket aces so you don't need to pay them off let me give you an example once again you've got two red kings you raise it up the nick calls you and by the turn the board reads eight of hearts, nine of clubs, six of diamonds, jack of diamonds. You make your bet on the turn and the nitty player, the nit, the rock, they raise you. Guys, all good players are going to fold their hand here. I know it's painful. We got pocket kings. How can we be behind? Guys, the tightest player at the table is not bluffing you, especially on a board like this, which has so many different straight possibilities, two pair possibilities, set possibilities. Guys, remember what are tight players calling us with preflop? They're calling us with hands like pocket jacks, pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket sixes, nine, eight. All of these kind of hands absolutely love this board. And as we already mentioned, these players don't bluff. When you call these players, especially on what I call the big money streets on the turn and river, I talk about this in my first poker book, these players are literally never bluffing, guys. Please don't pay them off. I know it sucks to fold your pocket aces or kings here, but all good poker players are disciplined enough to make the fold here. Let's move on to the third thing that you're never going to see good poker players doing at the poker tables and that is overvaluing top pair guys this is another classic sign of a recreational player because all good poker players know that with deeper stacks like 100 big blinds you're often going to find that in a cash game or the beginning stages of a tournament when somebody wants to play a big pot with you and you've only got top pair they're often going to have two pair trip straight flush something that beats your one pair hand so good players instead they know to pot control to check and just call keep the size of the pot manageable for example you've got ace 10 offsuit you raise it up preflop flop comes down with a five of hearts ten of clubs and four of clubs you make your bet and an aggressive player raises you now we've got top pair 
there, top kicker. It's a great situation, but we don't have the nuts, guys. While this is an aggressive player and they can be raising us with many draws on this board, for example, 7-6 for a straight draw, aggressive players will raise that. There's also club draw on this flop here, aggressive players will raise that, and they might even just be raising us with king-10 or queen-10, which we are well ahead of. But good poker players know that there's literally no value here, guys, in re-raising them again because you're only going to get action at that point versus any decent thinking regular opponent from a hand that beats you like pocket tens like five four like pocket fours pocket fives pocket aces pocket kings you get the idea in a situation like this it is much better even though we have top pair top kicker to just call in this situation manage the size of the pot and continue on to the turn guys always understand that when the stacks are deeper you don't want to just be ramming and jamming top pair all the time now if you're playing in a tournament you only got 30 big blinds totally different story i'm specifically talking about deep stacks here guys 100 big blinds or more you need to be careful with your top pair don't make the mistake of thinking that it's the best hand ever created let's move on to thing number two you're never going to see good poker players doing and that is getting emotional over bad beats and you can see the money sign and the fire there and i put that there for a reason because it's literally lighting money on fire guys amateurs love to complain all the time about how unlucky they are you see it in every live casino game in the world they're always ready to peddle their bad beat stories about how their you know ace king got cracked three times last night and if you've been around the internet for any amount of time they're everywhere they're in every comment section they're in my private facebook poker group they're everywhere we even tried to ban that in the group and we can't keep it out people love to complain about how unlucky they are at the poker table guys but all good poker players they know the math guys they know that you are going to get unlucky in poker sometimes it's how the game works it's why the bad poker players keep coming for more i've talked about it many times in the videos here on the channel that there's a reason that there's a lot of money in poker and there's not a lot of money in a game like chess because chess is literally a game of nearly 100 skill whereas in poker you can get lucky sometimes even versus the best poker player in the world so for example you got a hand like two black aces pocket aces guys need to understand that mathematically this hand is going to lose if you just go all in preflop and the other guy's got pocket sixes you're gonna lose around 20 percent of the time it's just the math that is built into the game and when this happens one out of five times that is just how the game works it doesn't mean anything else guys it doesn't mean that the site's rigged against you that somebody's cheating somebody's a super user or something i'm not saying that stuff never happens guys you should always be aware of what poker game you're playing in but by and large a lot of people tend to discount the math in this game and they think that a hand like pocket aces is just a, a license to print money and it's just not how the game works guys if you want to keep the bad poker players coming back for more you need to throw them a bone you need to let them win sometimes once again that's why there's lots of money in this game because it allows the bad poker players to keep blaming away their losses on all of their bad luck and continuing to reload again and again and to come back and to fund the entire industry whereas in a game like chess or mma or something you're not going to get lucky against the best fighter in the world or the best chess player in the world when you lose in those games you just lost because they're better than you let's move on to the number one thing that you're never going to see good poker players doing and you know i've mentioned this a million times that is playing in bad games guys the number one thing guys you need to understand about poker is that all the money comes from the recreational players aka the fish there is so much stuff these days people are studying they're spending endless hours and thousands of dollars studying gto game theory optimal and so over analysis all this crazy stuff guys and it's literally a waste of time if you want to go butt heads with other world-class professionals in mid and high stakes games go ahead but guys you need to understand that you're literally trying to draw blood from a stone the real money in poker comes from a wide gap in skill level if you just want to make a lot of money guys in poker you want to be highly successful just play in games with lots of bad players you don't need to be a math genius you don't need to study gto you don't need to study 
solvers. You just need to get good at the number one skill in poker, which is finding the right poker games to play in. So do not play in games that are full of tags, tight and aggressive, lags, let loose and aggressive, and nits, as we already talked about. And by the way, if you don't know how to quickly recognize these players, I have a free poker cheat sheet which walks you through it, including what hands to play and everything else. I'll link that up as the top link in the description below. But guys, if you're at a poker table and you notice that all of your opponents at your table are these other strong, decent, regular kind of opponents, you should leave immediately. You should not be trying to sit there trying to outskill other good poker players who are watching videos like this, who are studying the game, taking it seriously, because that doesn't make any sense, guys. There's a hundred other poker games out there with recreational players who barely know if a flush beats a straight. Another guy who's had 10 beers and he's on tilt. That's the game you should be playing in, guys. Please, guys, if you take one thing from this video, do not make the mistake that so many poker players make these days of getting your ego involved in the game and trying to butt heads versus other strong players. It is literally a waste of your time, guys, if making money, profit in this game is your goal. And I think that's probably the goal of most of you guys watching this video. All right, guys, like and subscribe if you found this one helpful. And once again, if you want to know my entire strategy, including what hands to play, when to bet, raise, bluff, and fold, all that good stuff, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Never do these five things at the poker tables, guys. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.